Traders, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be going over the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, exactly the move we had going on today. We have very big news going out tomorrow regarding the mortgage rates, and we need to be talking about what you need to be expecting specifically on the market going into tomorrow, despite the massive move we had today and how people are being trapped specifically going into earnings. However, before we go into any of that content, I ask you consider to do two things, liking and subscribing. I'm posting videos every single day regarding the market, what you need to be expecting. And yesterday we mentioned you were probably going to get a test of this 44 level on SPY and the move you had on NASDAQ. So you're getting the exact movement we're expecting for day trading and then the long-term perspective as well of the overall scale of the market. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get to the charts. Before we hop right into those charts, I want to go over what's happening tomorrow. So today, the really bullish aspect of the market was when you had Fed Evans speaking and then you had some of this other information. But this was your big one was Fed Evans speaking right here. Now, going into tomorrow, these are what's going to really be influencing the market specifically in the morning is you got your bonds being released. And the beige book is going to be covering the economic policy and how we're moving with inflation and things like that near the end of the day. So I expect a lot of skepticism going into that. You can also see this if you're in Discord, and I'll have the link pushed down below if you want to check it out as well. Uh, but the mortgage rates, we obviously expect the housing market to continue to get slapped. We've been going over that for some time now, but this is going to give us a better scale, and I'll be covering this in tomorrow's video, of course. And then home sales are going to be very big, and we're expecting a big miss here. They're saying you're only at a minus 4.9, but look at last month. You had a minus 7.2. We expect more home sales to decrease now as well. So going back into the NASDAQ, how is it moving? What's happening? Now, this is going to be the 15 minute chart, giving you a broader perspective of the day. And I'm just going to show you overall the daily levels really quick so we can open that up. So the purple is going to represent the actual daily open. And this is going to be from Asia's market open. That's when the market closes is roughly 5 p.m. central time so that's when you have that closing asia opens up around 7 p.m central and then you're tuning up and you basically went to the upside but looking at the s p i'm going to show you this really quick to the point so you this is what you had going on over the past few days you had a descending wedge happening key levels breaking down what were we looking at now going into yesterday you were trading and pinballing in this key range here highs of about 439.5 lows of roughly 435.6 435.7 up and down up and down now going into yesterday we had a very strong close pushing you back up to that vwap and i mentioned based on that volume based on everything being said going into the end of the day i projected more of a push up to the upside and i said if you got above 439.5 you would test quickly the 441.5 442 and then eventually the 444 going over to nasdaq how we looked at that it was very simple as well we said you were going to get back above this 4 k region here and pushing up to 14.3 you push roughly to 14.25 and you get rejected at the end of the day and this is coming straight from netflix and we need to talk about netflix now this is from twitter and this is basically them just dropping the news as you get it i use twitter for a lot of my news and a lot of it can be fact checked if you go back on it so i follow the most reputable people as possible and they're giving me information from the bloomberg terminal and things like that so netflix released their earnings immediately at close and this was something that i was and anticipating and something that we need to be anticipating through this earnings season. And I think we're going to see a lot of blood on the market. If you don't know, a lot of companies basically blacklisted Russia, so they shut down everything there. So Russia actions resulted in a 0.7 mil impact on paid net ads. This kind of left me with a few questions. And then you come over here and it said paid net additions were 0.2 mil compared to our guidance forecast of 0.25. So not only were they negative from Russia, but just in general, they got absolutely slapped and four mil in the same quarter a year ago. The suspension of our services in Russia and winding down all Russian paid memberships resulted in negative 0.7 M. And this is going to continue to decrease and they're projecting a 0.2 mil miss on the next quarter impact on the pay net ads. So you're seeing Netflix absolutely get railed on their advertisements. And this is kind of just the beginning setting the scale for earnings. So when you see companies like Facebook and some of these bigger ones like Twitter and where they're making their money off of advertisements, this is going to be absolutely detrimental for these big brands. And we could absolutely start to see pain across the market, specifically in big tech. Roku, some of the other big names like that are going to absolutely get slapped. And look at how that one earnings affected us, a straight 100 point drop out of the gate on the NASDAQ. So again, if you get back below this 14K range here, in my opinion, it's the same zone. You're most likely going to come retest this area about 13.75, the area you've been testing right down here. This is your support. 
and you're just going to keep chopping down and playing that pinball game, pushing down below, coming back, and just pinball in this zone. And then as you get below this, again, you know our target is down here at the low 13s. That's what we're expecting to get a touch in the very near-term future. And with earnings going on right now, it's looking like as these earnings continue to give a bear case, that will happen sooner than later. So today, I mentioned trading to the upside was the way. Going into tomorrow, I do think there's possibility for more downside. It's worth mentioning you do have Tesla coming out with earnings tomorrow. So that's going to be very big and influential as well. But I just don't see the case for us to continue up based on how they push this outlook. And this is the last thing we need to talk about. So if you don't know, Fed Bullard spoke yesterday, and this is what people are running with, is that he said you're getting a 75 BP hike. That's not what he said. This is not what he said. So when you come down and read this, it is cause for concern, but it is also cause to get this upside push. And I do believe the Fed is trying to help push up stocks during this earnings season because they expect downside coming from this specifically from russia and so what you saw him say was this specifically regarding the 50 bp hike it is not my base case right that's what he said and in 75 he also said he would not rule it out but it was also not his base case and then you're also seeing all these articles pushing this narrative that he said that and they're leaving out the fact that he said it is not my base case so he said that about both of them but he said he wouldn't rule out either of them so it's definitely giving you the idea that they're trying to push for a 0.25 hike and as long as you get a 0.25 hike you're probably going to continue to see upside on the market however they're leaving this open-ended because tomorrow again you're getting that beige book and if you get that beige book and it's showing a lot of inflation problems and nothing being solved or there's no real light at the end of the tunnel then that's very bad news for the market and you're going to definitely start seeing a 0.5 hike now also worth mentioning this is where things got terrible buller said he remains on board with almost certain series of half percentage point rate rises as the central bank presses forward with the plans to help bring inflation now at 40-year highs under control by lifting the federal fund rate target to around 3.5 by year end now this could get confusing but this is specifically what they're talking about it's their interest rate decision and they're trying to get this number from 0.5 all the way by december 14th to 0.35 Simple math will tell us one, two, three, four, five, six meetings left. That means the average hike has got to be a 0.5 hike. That's what that means. Just to get us to 0.35. That's all that has to happen. And that would absolutely castrate the market. Because if we go back and we look at the 10-year yields versus the 30-year yields, what does it tell us? It tells us as we look at this, what's going on in the market. Every time we get a hike, you are shooting up every single time. If we go back here and check, you were getting periodic hikes. Maybe every other month you were hiking up, coming down, hiking up, coming down. But you were seeing all this movement to the upside without a rate hike. The second you got a rate hike, guess what happened? You went from a 0.8 inversion rate all the way roughly to 0.99 in literally three and a half, four weeks. Now you came down. And the hikes are being mentioned again. You're told that you're going to get 0.35 by the end of the year. Guess what happens? You're spiking all the way back up. You're almost already inverted completely. What happened the last time? The last time you got even close to these levels, you hit about an overall yield inversion in about 2018 and you came down. But you can never really get there. So you have to go all the way back to 2007 and 2006. What happened there? You hit right here. You had that complete inversion here. You came down and started scaling it in. Everyone remembers the market started to take a tumble. That's what happened. You started to absolutely start to take a tumble. Then we can come look at Spider chart real quick. Just add it right on top there so you can see. Go back to full screen. You can see you start to peak here. You find a peak and then boom. You have that period of stagnation here. You're finding a new high and then boom, the market has an absolute crisis. Coming back here, this is the dot com bubble. You started to find a top right here. Guess what happens? As you have that complete inversion, this is a the biggest inversion you've had right here, and then boom, huge major crash over the next two to three years to the downside on SPY. So looking at what's happening, people are gonna say, Tyler, well, isn't it possible you could push back up? I believe this was your push back up. I believe this was the process of getting ready for it because you should have had this happen back here. However, COVID and everything else happened, you pushed back up, and now you're getting hikes across the board. You're about to have 0.5 hikes back to back to back to back to back. And this is cause for concern. I see more downside on the broad scale. So as we see these 
earnings coming out worse and worse and more negative, this is going to continue to push these rates to new levels and inversions getting absolutely uncontrollable for more downside. So long, broad scale market has massive and immense downside, specifically on the S&P. That's going to wrap the video up. If you got anything else, please consider liking and subscribing. Every single day I'm bringing videos to you guys. It does not matter. I'm bringing them to you every single day around 4 to 7 p.m. Central. I'm bumping that time up a little bit up right now because I'm making the videos as market closes. But it's going to be between 4 and 7 p.m. Central every single day regarding the S&P 500 and the key news that's going to move the market into the next day and how you need to be looking at the market going into each trading day. As always, have a good one.